What's up folks, welcome back to another video where we're gonna be explaining you what exactly is GitHub and why developers are so excited about GitHub. First thing first, let's answer to the question, what is GitHub? Well, if I wanted to describe GitHub in just like the way that the world or Google is describing GitHub, I'll go and say that GitHub is a Git repository hosting service. At this point, you might be like, Wait, what? What did you just say? Well, let's go one step back right here, right? Before we can tell you what GitHub is, we need to understand the word Git. Now, if this is the first time you heard it, or maybe you've heard it before, but you had no clue, you might be asking yourself this question like, okay, Sterling, what the heck is Git? You told me in order to understand GitHub, I need to understand Git first, right? But what the hell is Git? Well, if I wanted to explain Git for you, I'll say that Git is a command line tool. What a command line tool is something that, as you can see in this example here, it's something that you're doing in your terminal and you're doing it in your terminal only. It's not a browser thing. It's not a Facebook thing. It's, it's only something that you are doing inside your terminal. Okay, as you can see here, you're literally stuck. It doesn't do anything other than that. But what it really allows you to do in your terminal, it allows you to manage and stores different revisions of your project. A lot of people use it, use Git to track changes in their source code and uh, within your source code as well, you'll be able to, to work with multiple developers, but still inside your terminal. Again, all of this is inside your terminal. But before I can go further, okay, Sterling, you just told me that Git, it's something that I do in my terminal, but how the hell does it work? Well, here's how does here's how Git work. First, Git is like what they call a distributed version control, and there are different one of them out there, which we're gonna talk to you in a second. But if you wanted to make a change to a project that you're working on on your computer, you would have to make a copy of the whole repository, aka folder to your own system, okay? So if I wanted to contribute to a project, let's assume that, hey, YouTube is working on a project, they have what they call an open source project, and I wanted to contribute, well, in order for me to contribute, I would have to clone this to my own system on my computer. Then after that, I make my changes locally on my computer, and then once I'm done with my changes, okay, this is where I literally go ahead and check the changes to the central server. Now, this is exactly how Git works. You make a copy of the old system, you work on it on your local computer. Once you're done with your changes, then you go and check the changes to the central server. Again, none of this might not make sense, but don't worry. At the end, we're gonna give you guys a demo exactly how this works, and you can see uh, you can see a better picture of it, right? But why does Git work like this? Well, the reason it's working like this is because it encourages or it encourages the, to share more granular changes so that you don't have to connect uh, to server every time that you make a change. Yes, you heard it. There are some old process, or if you want to call it some sort of Git, GitHub predecessors, if you wanted to make a change, you would have to connect to the servers all the time. And here's one example of some of the Git predecessors that used to do that. Like there is, a, 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 after Git, before Git, there were CVS. Now it's not the CVS pharmacy, <laughs> that's not, uh, but it's the CVS version control, okay? In order for you to make a change, you have to connect to a server. Compared to GitHub, you make the changes to your local copy, and then you check the changes to the actual uh, server, right? So this is some of the GitHub, uh, Git predecessors, not GitHub, sorry, Git predecessors. But again, if we remember, we're still talking about Git. And what that means is if you're doing Git, you still talk inside your terminal forever. Now think about this. If you are developing a project and you literally just talk to your terminal and you do not go anywhere, then this could be pretty much super boring. Just imagine in real life, if we stay at home forever, we're just going to 
feel really bored. We want to do things, even though there were COVID, but we still want to go outside and do things, you know, just for us to get some fresh air. Well, the good news is you don't have to stop to your terminal all ever again. And this is why GitHub exists. Now GitHub allow you to go beyond whatever you were used to do inside your terminal with Git now to do it inside the cloud. Now think about this for a second. Now, whatever you were used to do with Git, even though you knew, even though you're a Git expert, whatever you were used to do with Git and stuck in your terminal, now you could do this with GitHub and the world can see everything you're doing. The world can see every project that you're contributing to. Literally, you got an extra superpower with GitHub because GitHub is built to take everything that you were used to do with Git and now you can do them in the cloud. Now, if you go back to the actual definition of GitHub, remember GitHub is like a hosting service for Git. Now things start at least to make sense, right? But GitHub, if we take a look at their homepage, they said this is where the world builds software. And yes, it is true. A lot of great software are built using GitHub. If we didn't have GitHub, we would not have something called Node.js today. But how, th how, how were things used to be done before GitHub? Like before GitHub existed, if you wanted to contribute to what they call an open source project, a free project that anybody can uh, contribute to, how were the process? Well, the process was super complicated. First, you have to manually to download the project source code. Again, remember, you're still doing Git, which you have to manually download the source code onto your own computer. Then you make the changes locally. Again, you're still doing Git. You got that, you see? You're still working on your local computer. And then after that, you create a list of changes. You see, you make a change to your local computer, but in another world, they call them patch. And after you've done that, again, you're still doing Git. This is before GitHub comes into place. If you were wanted to work with Git, this is how it used to be. And then after that, then you email the patch to the project's maintainer, like the persons responsible for the project or the persons leading the project, right? You email the patch to the project maintainer. Then the project maintainer or the maintainer itself would have to then evaluate your change. Like they would have to think, you know, to check your changes because guess what? They don't know you. You just literally email somebody with your own code, your own changes, and you tell them, hey, can you put this into your software for me, right? What if you what if that person is a hacker? You don't know. Because you're a total stranger. Anybody can create an email and send you some code and say, hey, can you add this? Of course, the maintainer need to evaluate it and then they need to decide either or not they should be merging or aka get your code into the main code. Again, this might not make sense. That's okay. We're going to show you a demo on how exactly GitHub work in World Wealth. We're going to demo that in a second, but just let's go through a couple of uh, things real quick. Well, that was before GitHub. Now with GitHub, we have something called, uh, and of course, before GitHub, you would be like this guy. Like you would literally, <laughs> at a point, if you are a maintainer, you would feel like this. Because imagine that just one person emailing you code, but 10,000, 100k thousand people are sending you code, emailing you code, just for you to review, and they are complete, some of them are completely strangers, right? You would feel like this this if you are a maintainer. Well, the good news is now with GitHub, you have something what they call a pull request. And this is exactly what it looks like. This is a pull request that I was able to get from the Node.js project itself. And this person, it's a person named Traces that uh, that is, you know, that is working with Git and he cloned the project on, on his own on on system. He make changes. Now, again, you heard that. He is working with Git, like he's working on his terminal, his talk, right? And then he completely make the changes. He does everything locally. But instead of emailing that change to the maintainer, he goes to GitHub and create what they call a pull request. Okay. Now, instead of emailing, he 
goes to GitHub and create what they call a pull request. Now, a pull request is like emailing somebody. But the good news with pull requests, which we're going to take a deeper look about it in a second, but the good, to, the good news with pull requests is now the maintainer doesn't have to feel like Traces is a stranger because the maintainer can just go ahead and look at Traces profile, you know, and can see how his contribution is being accepted over time, over time, what he's working on, some of the project that he's working on and so on. And then he can, you know, other people can review Traces code. So it GitHub allow us to really collaborate together as a developer and build software for the world. Again, if you remember, this is where the world is built. Now, if we go back again to your point, this is a profile. Again, if you come back to the actual question that we had earlier, what is GitHub? Well, if you wanted to explain people what the heck is GitHub, you could say, hey, GitHub is a Git. Now you understand Git is only locally, you're working with it locally. It's a Git repository hosting service. Okay, Sterling, you just confused me. I'm still lost. I have no clue what you're talking about. I understand you explain a lot of things, but can you show me a demo beside this? The good news is, yes, I can show you a demo beside this, and we're going to take a look at exactly Git in action. And there you go, guys. This is my terminal. If you don't know what a terminal is, I would advise for you to do some research, but you can search into your computer and just type the word terminal. You'll be able to at least uh, find that and open it. Anyway, long story short, this is my terminal, right? If I wanted to uh, work on a Git project, I'm going to go ahead here and navigate, do a couple navigation. Now I'm literally inside my desktop computer. And once I'm here, I can go here and make what they call a, a Git demo. Let's assume that, right? So inside that Git demo, I can, you can see now it's of course, uh, I need to go inside of it. It's called Git demo, okay? Once I'm inside of it, it is empty. Okay, and I can create a very simple file here. I can say, okay, this is a very simple file. And now you can see now there is a file inside this. But check this out. If we go here, there is no Git project. Again, all of this I'm doing, it's literally locally. You see, now I initialize a project. I start working with Git. And now you can see Git start tracking my changes locally and this is red and blah 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 and so on we can kind of go with different state that's not the point what i really want you guys to get from this is hey git is tracking my changes right let's see i'm gonna show you i'm gonna go to different changes that's fine hey now the file changes from red to green right and if I go again and possibly change make a change inside this file I can say hey this one is an h1 I could say hello wall. Uh, you can see here, and I'm gonna save that. Boom, boom, boom. If I do git status again, you can see now that hey, git instantly know that this file has been modified. Okay, so the bottom line behind this is I just want you guys to see that git is a command line tool that is tracking what we're doing with these files. Okay, what we that is tracking our source code locally but beyond this this is all it does it doesn't do anything else like nobody can come within my terminal and be like hey can i collaborate with your terminal here right and so on well we want to make sure that the world can see this and this is where github is is coming handy because now instead of me saying hey this is the file that i added to one stage and this is the same file that i modify right and uh, we've seen different version of my source code. Now we're gonna take this to GitHub and show you how GitHub itself look like for you to have a bigger picture on how this works. Now this is GitHub. This is GitHub. This is not my terminal that I'm stuck to, okay? This is actually GitHub uh, platform itself. And what we're looking at here is somebody's profile. When, when you're contributing to a project or you're working on something, anybody can go ahead and see your actual profile, right? There's different type of profile that you can create. Actually, if you want to create a profile with a readme file so that people can have a description, check out my other video. Uh, you'll have it. You'll see it. You'll be able to see how you can create that profile. What I'm referring to is if you want to create a profile that look like this, right? 
like hi there i'm kisha prudente uh, yada yada and so on by the way kisha is one of the great developers i've worked with she's amazing if you're ever looking for somebody to work with i highly recommend uh, Keisha Prudente, she's amazing. She's a great worker. By the way, Keisha, if you're watching this, kudos to you. Anyway, if you want to have something that looks like this, check out one of my video in the description below. Let's go back, right? So this is my profile. This is how it looks like. Anybody can go ahead and look at your profile. The good thing about GitHub is people are using it beyond its capacity. And this is good when you build a software, right? What I mean by this is employers sometimes can come in and say, hey, how long Sterling's been coding? And that's one of the reasons I highly recommend, guys, the moment you start writing code to go ahead and create a profile on GitHub. And you can kind of see my coding journey. I really started creating a GitHub account on 2015. I had no clue what that was. But hey, I made my first contribution on December 23rd, 2015. Yay! But the reason I'm showing you this is, hey, employer can come in and see how often you're computing contributing you can see 2016 i started a really kind of go into it like i think i made the contribute contribution in december uh since january february march i wasn't understand github and how it works and then i started really understanding it in april and then from there i kind of go in and start developing and you can kind of watch my entire journey here with github and until 2021 now my profile is not as high as most of people do we use a github enterprise big companies do and this is where you'll see my profile is a little bit higher than this but anyway long story short uh, people can look at your profile to learn more about hey things that you're working on you know things that you're contributing to activities that you're working on and so on and so on and different organization that you're being part to part of too and so on right so the next step is i'm going to show you guys a project like the node.js project and i'm going to show you how people are contributing to this project now welcome to the node.js organization or aka project and by the way guys this is our an organization will look like you can get verified and you can see every single repositories that might be a new term but what that actually mean it's just a folder there are 189 folders within this and folders could be project but in the github world they call it repository there's more than that to it which we're gonna take a look at one of them in a second but we can have a look of how many projects or repository they have, how many uh, people they have that are actually part of the Node.js uh, uh, Node uh, organization and one of the main projects that they're working on, okay? So we're going to go ahead and see Node, how people are using GitHub to build Node, right? So before we can do that, let me kind of show you guys some of the company using Node.js. Here are some of the companies using Node.js. Even Uber, yes, Uber. Everybody here is taking an Uber. Or you might be buying things on eBay or you might be using PayPal. Well, they're all using Node.js. But where did they build Node.js? Well, they built it using GitHub, all right? They built it using GitHub because they wanted something that the world can contribute to instead of you random people emailing the maintainer like they wanted the world to be able to see something more and, and be able to allow people to contribute more right so this is a repository this is what a project looks like on node the first thing i don't want to show you here is you have these uh, different things here that you can take a look at there is the code the issue section uh, this is people reporting issue with the project uh, there is pull request this is where actually if you remember the pull request that i mentioned earlier this is where people go ahead and instead of emailing they send their code on that process so for example there are 279 pull requests what that means is they are actively right now 279 people that want their code to be merged with Node.js or the 200 email sent to the maintainer for the maintainer to review the code and get their code in. So in another word, in another word, I hope that makes sense. There's the discussion and uh, discussion tab where you can kind of go ahead and discuss. Action one, it's actually really cool. This is where you can automate the entire project itself. So action or per project. For example, if you wanted to automatically push this to uh, the production or do anything you want to do. So action allow you to automate that. So the project is more like a project management. And one of the things I like about GitHub is you don't need to be 
a developer to start using GitHub. You could be using uh, the project management tab in if you own project manager, you could use it to manage to help manage the project as well. There are some security checks that GitHub automatically does for you and report them. So as you're working on a project, GitHub will do that check for you. And the inside section is for you to learn more about your project that you're working on. So these are the tabs which we're going to take a look at one of them. If, again, if you really like this video, you feel like you're getting value out of this we might do a second part of where we go deeper on what uh, like to kind of review every single one of them but in order to keep this video short because we're already beyond 17 minutes uh i just want to go ahead and show you some of the core project right so uh here we got breaches and breaches are different version that git was able to report remember git allow you to track changes but you can have different version of your project. For example, hey, there's one uh, uh, with GitHub, with Node.js, they might have like a version five. The version five include this and so on, right? So branches are different version of, 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 of the code that you're working on uh, that, that could be managed here as well. Uh, these are tags. Tags are a way to, whenever you releasing something, you release means that, hey, we're working on this, we're done with it. Well, we want to be able to release that, right? Uh, and in order for us to release that, some of the people usually add a tag. A tag would be some sort of like identifier that we can put on a release. So if you go here, right there on this section right here, you can see that there has made over 690 90 release and all of them includes a different tag just in case that they want to go back again and people that actually been contributing to to the node.js project there's been over 3,000 people if you remember they're only about 200 something plus members but the people that were able to contribute it's over 3,000 like literally 3,000 people make a software that companies like paypal ebay uh, and Uber are using today. And this is the beauty of GitHub, guys. Like, I hope you, you see an idea about this. Again, remember, GitHub is just using Git uh, to make Git available. And some of the features that Git has, it allows you to be able to use them right there. Okay, so with GitHub, you can see the amount of days. For example, there's been some changes on this two days ago, four days ago, there's been some changes uh, and, and so on and so on. You can see, hey, there's been some changes here four days, six months ago, 12 days ago and so on. You can kind of have a look and see what's happening here. You can see the languages that they're using to build Node.js. Like here, you can see JavaScript, 63% of that project, it's 62.3 JavaScript, C++ 20%, Python 12%. So they're using a combination of languages to make Node.js that powerful today. Okay, again, it might be something that they automate with different languages or different things, but you have an idea what this is. And then they got the license. Different software has different license. Some of them are, are like uh, MIT license, which means everybody can use it. So you can have different license here and you can uh, take a look at them here. So what I wanna do here again, I don't want this video to be super long. I just want to go ahead and show you guys the pull request section. 279 people, or they could be the same person, but 279 changes are being requested right now to be able to merge in this project. Again, remember, there's been over 3,000 people that contribute, but there are more than 25,000 things that have gone into this project from different people around the world. 3,000 people, they've made over... 25,000 changes, like 25 things got into this project. Now, when you take a look at Google pull requests, you can kind of filter them out. You can filter them by your issue if you had reported something or your pull request or things that are assigned to you. So you have that flexibility here. And then the only thing is you can see here, they have different different labels, right? Like need CIs, for example, this one, hey, it's something that needs CI. This is C++, this is uh, DNS, this is uh, HTTP. So some of the projects uh, are more beginner friendly. We might do a video about this, but uh, in this one, some of, uh, some of the label I used to see could be, hey, first timers or welcome. 
right? This is a way for people to let them know, hey, if you're new in this, you are more than welcome uh, to contribute. So they kind of add different labels in a, a like author ready, for example, hey, this is ready, this is documentation doc. Like this is not code related, this is only documentation, right? So there, there, there's different ways you can contribute when working on a project. You don't need to code, maybe you're a good writer, you wanna help them write documentation, you can do that. And here you can kind of see different comments and so on. Now, there are some further filtering that you can do here. You can filter by author. So if you know somebody, uh, you can filter them. Let's assume that, hey, this guy, uh, Anna, what is it? Anna Henning Singh. So you can filter by her name and you can see, hey, Anna Villiston has seven open PO, but she made over 13,000 uh, contribution to the Node project herself like she's really committed and she's really getting things done which is super super awesome you can search them by labels uh, you, you kind of have an idea here Pro by project by milestone by reviews uh, there's different sort sorting of filter mechanism that you can do here in order to be able to find things easier okay so let's take a look at one of the things that she has right let's take a look and see what happens so here's one of the things she done Okay, remember, instead of emailing, GitHub allow you to get that entire hub, but with Git, okay? It, it built it on top of Git. Git is just on your terminal, but when you push it, then GitHub kind of take the Git data and it kind of really give you everything that you need, plus some other features they added. Anyway, this is this is Anna Changes. She said in two places we call blah, 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 even though that is technically invalid, okay? Uh, now that V8 exposes blah, 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 we can do this in a proper way. So she's literally just rewriting something uh, to be better, right? And then there are two people that reviewed it five days ago. This is literally five days ago. They approve it, Tago approve it, and then Tago also added two labels onto her changes. Node.js automatically. You see Node.js has a bot, and that's something else we can talk about GitHub. Uh, but GitHub, can you can kind of have different features with GitHub where you can add a bot that automatically do certain things for you. And then people are leaving comments, people are approving, blah, 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 blah. LGTM means look good to me. That's something FYI. And then after that, you can see all the check or pass, and then the maintainer or anybody that got that privilege right, then they can come in and kind of merge that request. I can't merge it uh, because I don't have, I'm not part of those people uh, that'll call the, the, the members, but any members can come here as long as they have the right right, then they can merge that into their code. There are two tests that are failing that might prevent this to merge, but you'll have to fix those in order that you know, to merge. Anyway, uh, but the only thing we can do is we can take a look at her actual code. What did she do, right? Well, how did she fix this? Well, guess what? In a file called node.cc, which I'm assuming it's a C++, well, this is some of the comments. Well, she first up updated the comments here. Okay, she said blah, blah, blah. And then uh, she updated the comments. And then after that, she just literally come here and change this function, this to this function. And then she come here and change it, and boom, change it. You see, everywhere that was using, and she got rid of that because we, I'm assuming that we no longer did that. It's a simple change. But we can see on the left how the code worked, and on the right, what the new code is. In this case, on the left one, this is how the code was. And on the right one, this is what we get. And ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the beauty about GitHub. It gives you that entire flexibility. If I'm a student, I can come here and learn. Uh, hey, this is how we're doing this. You know, I can learn from her. I can comment. Maybe I have some question. I could be like, I can comment per line. I can come here and say, hey, if I want to comment, hey, what is this? Blah, 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 blah. If I want to comment, things out. So uh, this is her. This is a one person. And if I take a look at her profile, and then I can see more things about that person that is contributing to the Node.js project, if it is a legit person or if she is not a legit person. And you can see here, she's made over 3,000 plus contribution on GitHub. And she's part of two main organizations, the Node.js one and something called Instaball. And I can see that she's been coding since 2000. 11. Let's take a look at her journey. I'm curious. Yes, look at that. <laughs> First time she got introduced to GitHub, she only made one contribu contribution on July 6, 2011. And then the next year after that, 
Uh, let's see. Oh, she did not code at all. Like she literally just come here, create an account, put something out there, and that was it. <laughs> she spent an entire year, and in 2013, she come back at the, the end of June, and she start making some good contribution. You can look at how people, and for some reason, sometime here, she didn't code much. It could be maybe she was taking some time off. So those things are valuable to a potential employer on how they can really look and take a look at the candidate. But again, guys, I think this is beyond what we wanted uh, uh, as part of this video, but I wanted to kind of show you how exactly GitHub themselves work. So if you find this video super helpful, do not forget to, uh, to, to, to give this video likes uh, and please leave on your comment, leave anything. Let us know where you're watching this from. Uh, if you learned something, share what you've learned. And, uh, and, and do not forget, guys, to really get, is that a really good term? Get the YouTube algorithm. Like, just get the like button. Anyway, long story short. Anyway, welcome back, folks. That was super awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed and see you on the next video.